Okay, are we live? Mm -hmm. Hi, thank you for joining us. Um, the picture's very nearly finished now. Um, I'm testing my patience by adding stars and a Milky Way that's going to drift through. Um, a little bit more work to be done here. I painted, I left the cat, but I painted out all around him and assembled a tree. So there's no eyes because he's looking that way. And um, I'm going to add another tree in there. So it's. I thought too today I would experiment with oil painting because I was asked a lot of those questions at the beginning and I found some oil colours that I bought in the late 60s <laughs> and to my amazement they came out of the tube. Some of them are a bit solid and some are less but they'll, they soften up with linseed oil and I thought I'd do an experiment, paint a tree or something. just to see how it goes. I wanted to feel what oil colours felt like before I went into a lot more careful read of the science and technology. Um, I've also got a few notes to make to you. I got the wrong date at the beginning of the Yes Tour next year. It starts in Lisbon, not Manchester. And we will be on that. At the moment, it looks like we're going to be on every day. But it's a long time off and more dates will be added and maybe even some subtracted. So if you're interested, you need to stay on it. Go on Yes World site and check the dates. Um, we've been asked a lot about the sketches and they are now on the website. So if you go on the website and you go into the shop and you go into sketches and scroll down, what are they called for? The called live session items of interest um live session items of interest they're there <laughs> um another thought we've been playing with and playing with and it's going to take a lot of logistics to sort out we're going to do the talk on architecture and we're going to set up a green screen and we're going i'm going to talk in front of the images of the architecture so I can explain it and you can see it but in the meantime we are looking at rescuing the original well I say original it was the third prototype we built it's been in storage outside for 25 years now um, it's been in an industrial park where they very kindly let us park it but we want to see what would be involved in bringing it back here to my studio and restoring it. And we don't know what the logistics are. We don't know if we need planning consent. We don't know if it'd be better to build it for real or to restore the prototype. So we're going to look into all of that. But the point is, there's a lot of research we can do with a small prototype before we go into the logistics and technology of building it for real. which. I must say, from my point of view, I don't think it's going to be that complex. But we can get this one into quite a small space and solve a lot of problems with it. Um, if we were building my ideal uh, gallery visitor center, we would probably look to build on at least seven or eight acres. Oh, one Maybe second, more. sorry. People are asking what the code required for accessing the website online stuff. Um, so the sketches should just be shop and then in sketches. Um, but if you're looking for the, there's another page which shows them with a couple of different views and that's online um, session stuff. The password is just Roger. So if you want to look at those pictures... It's got to be so I can find it. Lowercase R-O-G-E-R. -E oh, I wouldn't find that. <laughs> um, but you can find them just in shop and then sketches. But there's that page too. Sorry, carry on. That's okay. <laughs> okay, 
Um, one other thing, we've booked in to get this scanned and I thought it would be of interest to some people to see the process involved because it's super high resolution scanning and I get very, very good photographs from Quentin King who, who does some of the prints and he does brilliant photography. So he's agreed to let us film it being scanned. But that probably won't be live. It's going to be midday here on Friday. But we'll put it up on YouTube when we put up the talk on Friday. That's another point, actually, something I wanted to mention. Um, if you missed some of the sessions or you just like to watch them through sequentially or just find it all a little bit simpler, Dad has a YouTube channel, which is just called Roger Dean, and all of the films are there in chronological order, and you can dip in and catch up on ones that you miss out. And that's why we upload everything after these live streams as well. So if you ever miss anything, if you go to the YouTube channel, Roger Dean, it's all on there. Can they, can't that be accessed through the website? I don't know. But YouTube's easy enough to access. Right. I think that we'll have a link to it from I mean, you, the website. The videos are on the website too. Okay. Fine. So they're on Facebook, the website, and YouTube, but it's just nice and simple on YouTube. <laughs> All right. Okay. All three. Great. Okay. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do here is, as I say, it's pretty much done. I've been putting stars in, and I reckon I've got about a year to go before it's finished. I, I'm hoping about two hours to go, so I'm not going to do that in front Budge of you. Budge out the way. Let's have a look. You won't see the stars. They're too small. We can see them. Can you see them? Yeah. Ah, that probably means I made them too big. No. Have you been down to see the cat and the river? <laughs> I'd like to get a better angle. Hang on. There's your cat. What? Don't, yeah. don't, don't do anything. <laughs> There's your cat, everybody. <laughs> now I've got to put this back. Next, don't touch things. And getting sold off. There we go. Okay. I'm a little bit wary about doing this live, but there you go. I said I would. I'll have a shot at it. What are you doing live now? Well, I was going to paint this tree in, but I thought I'd do a sketch of it in um, oil paint first. Kaya asks, will you add snow? Snow? To... no. I think it's going to go as it is. It's a, it's a bit ambiguous and it does look a little bit like snow but I'm not going to add any more and there wouldn't be snow falling unless there were clouds in which case you wouldn't see the stars so I'm going to pretty much leave the sky as is but I've got some work to be doing here um, remember you're out of shot over there yeah I do that there for the moment. What I've done is I've got lots of watercolour sketch pads and I use them because I might use three or four at a time as you've seen already and I've put a white primer on top of the watercolour paper and on top of that I put an acrylic dark surface so that I can work on a dark surface. So this is totally experimental. I'm not expecting to do much more than come up with marks on the paper. I just want to feel, I guess, how sensual it is to work on oil. So are you good to do questions while you're doing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry again if I miss your names, guys. If you want to tell me again by writing your question again with your name at the end. Um, but we had some good questions that I just noted down. 
Um, would you have done, so this is the question as phraseology, uh, would you have done the same amazing sketches of your, oh wait, they probably didn't write sketches, that was me thinking and writing at the same time. Would you have still, still done the same amazing landscapes if you had done the covers for Led Zeppelin instead of yes? I'd have done whatever was appropriate. Um, I've done other things, you know, I mean, when, when I did Shadow of the Beast for Cygnosis, that was a kind of pretty menacing robot. So, yeah, horses for courses, as they say. But I'm not saying I wouldn't have done landscapes. I mean, I like Led Zeppelin's description of themselves on one occasion as essentially a folk band. It's... Yeah, it would have been fun to find out. Um, Lauren asks, I think this is your question, um, what did you draw as a child? Tanks, <laughs> planes, cowboys and Indians, spaceships. I did an enormous number of spaceships with, you know, cutaways showing where people lived, where the food was stored, all the important stuff. So, yeah, I, I love doing cutaways of spaceships. Donald asks what Yes logo will be on the cover of this? Well, that's, that's an easy one to answer because this is not really... Um, a brand new album. This is a live album and it will be the logo that was used on the tour, on the Royal Affair tour last year. We can't see what you're doing. Is there any way that you could angle that slightly differently? Yeah, but if I do that, people will be able to see and I'm not sure I'm if ready for If you don't that. do that, there's no <laughs> point anyone being here. Okay, all right. Nice. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. The Yes logo. Yes, it'll be the, the logo used for the Royal Affair Tour. Or something related to that, anyway. Avon asks, did you paint flying elephants? Did I paint flying elephants? Mm. Whatever. I guess when you were a child, I think that was a follow-up question. I did flying elephants for Osabisa. Yeah. But that wasn't, but they weren't something that you painted as a child. Oh, no, it? no, definitely not. I did do landscapes. I mean, we we're talking about very young when I was talking about the spaceships and things. But by the time I was in my teens, I did start looking at doing um, landscapes. When I was in Hong Kong, definitely. There's a very noticeable influence from Chinese watercolour painters. Alan asks, can we see the portrait of you that Jeff Jones did? Ah. Um, so, Paul, this is not acrylic, this is oil. Dad's using oil now. I'm making a hash of it, actually. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what it's like. Raise it up a little and turn it. I should have softened up these paints sometime be before using them. It's, um, but I'm beginning to get the feel for it and I'm beginning to enjoy it actually. We can't see it though. I know. It's, I'm dreading looking at it myself to be honest. Hmm, I love the smell of linseed oil. I guess my reaction so far is it's not bad. It's, um, it's weird. I love the slipperiness of it though. That, that's good fun. I think, yeah, I might do, I might have a shot at doing this for real, but I've got to read a lot first because 
I sit, this is simply catching me by surprise too much. John, Jonathan asks, um, why are you using oils now and not acrylic? Well, this is acrylic. This is just by way of an experiment because I said I would do it. But um, for the moment at least, it's, um, it needs more practice, frankly. So if I was going to do a painting this way, I'd probably do a great many more sketches before I started. How long since you last used oils? Um, quite a while. 19, uh, not far short of um, 21 years, so 51 years, so long time. Actually, that's not true. I've used them since, but I, I, I've never tried to do a painting since. Great to see pictures of the RD house today, Fred. Oh, damn it, I just missed that. Uh, ah, okay, so people are asking about the refurb and when it might start. Well, we have to find out. We've got to get quotes for moving it. We've got to get find out where we stand with local authorities about planning consent. We've got to talk to the neighbours. And we've got to do a quick survey. By quick, it's got to be very thorough. But we need we need a survey about what work actually needs doing, what we, how we can support it. Will we put it on a cap concrete platform, or will we lift it off the ground? Lots of questions to be asked, and we're we're going to go flat out and at least research the questions over the next two or three days. Well, by next week we should have made good progress, and we'll be talking to third parties in earnest by next week. Um, again, sorry, I'm very sorry I missed your name, um, but uh, somebody asked, did you ever do an oil painting as a cover? Would I ever? Could did I? you? Yes. Um, a band called Snafu, that was in part at least an oil painting. Avon asked, have you ever been to Japan? Many times, yeah. Love it. Robert asks, do you like cartoons, animation? If so, which ones? Well, by far and away, my favourites are Ghibli, Miyazaki's. Um, I think my favourite Miyazaki animation is My Neighbour Totoro. I love Spirited Away and I love Princess Mononoke. But in terms of brilliance and charm, my neighbour Totoro, yeah, hard one to beat. Yeah, I love, I love the work of that studio. It's fantastic. I wish this, uh, sorry guys, I wish this was a bit smoother that I could kind of go down and up. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it with the stand. Lots of people really like Ghibli as well and Totoro. Yes, I um, I had a lovely experience uh, on a trip to Tokyo. We went to see the Ghibli Museum. It was fabulous. It was just brilliant. Unfortunately, you can't just go. You have to book it what seemed like months in advance. Uh, but fortunately, I had someone who arranged that for me. And it was a fabulous experience. I loved it. Surprisingly small museum. And when I saw it, I thought, ha, huh, this is a role model for what I could do. But, um, yeah, I love it. I do recommend anyone goes to Japan to book themselves in for that. Um, a couple of people are asking about what's on the left. Can I show them? What's on the left of what? This. Yeah. So oh, they can see a little yeah. corner. It's, um, can you show them? Can I? Is that okay? Well, I can tell you what it is. It's Uriah Heaps. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm falling over lots of different bits of furniture. There we 
Okay. Okay. It's R- Relia Heap's um, magician's birthday. And BMG, who now have the catalogue for Uriah Heap, wanted me to redo it for a project they called The Art of the Album. And they did a fabulous reconstruction of the Demons and Wizards album last year or the year before. And so they asked me to do Magician's Birthday. So this is the basic painting, which we then change the colours of, we print it on a tinted background in colour with figures, but this is the basis for it. Sadly though, they've had a change of plan and they're not going to release it as part of the um, Art of the Album series, it's, but it's going to come out in a Uriah Heat box set. Okay, I'm going to manoeuvre back. I can just show one thing. Come back here a second. Uh. We've been doing prints on super high quality watercolour paper. And sometimes the prints go wrong. But the paper is still brilliant. So on the back of this painting is... I think people might want to see that again a little bit slower. Okay. It's part of a print for close to the edge. There were some errors in it. Instead of tearing it up though, I thought, hmm, it's really beautiful paper and I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to paint on the back of it. Okay. So we're going to have to <laughs> move this. Sorry, can you put it back where it was? I don't know, where was it? Is it like this? In there. Okay. Well, I do need a steady cam harness. If anyone <laughs> wants to donate one, Fair that would be brilliant. <laughs> what you need is a proper tripod, I think, not, not an old ladder. Okay. You're going to show us what you've been doing? I've just been slithering around in oil paint and I love that actually it's um, I love the slipperiness of it and the fact that it hasn't dried and I'm I've got another five prepared and I'm definitely going to be playing around with that so it's it's taught me only one thing I really want to do more of it Someone asked, how big is your studio, your real studio? My real studio? What's my real studio? I don't know. I can't imagine they think this is a sort of set. <laughs> you wouldn't do it like this if it was intentional. <laughs> <laughs> well, aim the camera at the floor. Okay. Prepare to be appalled. <laughs> so you can see... There is 20 years of paint splashes on the floor. So this is my studio. And it's quite big. Um, it's about 30 feet by 35 feet, which is 10 meters by 11 and a half meters. And quite high up. You know, my apartment that I was living in was 23 square metres, the whole apartment. <laughs> well, that's Japan. Yeah. <laughs> Four years. What can I say? Come <laughs> home. <laughs> I'm doing a bit better now. It's all right. Well, what's astonishing for me, and I'm really enjoying, is that these paints are over 50 years old they've been in tubes for 50 years and they're working fine and they're staying usable i've had to put a bit of linseed oil with them to sort of liven them up but they are working fantastic and it's going to be fun playing around with that some more um, 
I'm going to do the, some, the same tree here. And then that's pretty much it for the bigger elements of that painting. Alan says that floor is pretty clean for 20 years. Thank you, Alan. It's nice. <laughs> Uh, Mark wants to know, could you talk about doing the Virgin logo? Which aspect of the Virgin logo? I guess just talk about the process, or how it happened. Or... Well, the Virgin logo was an interesting experiment for me, because I was introduced to Richard. He was just wrapping up working on um, a magazine called Student, and getting his getting into the record business and he told me he was going to form a record company and it seemed unlikely but not so unlikely I didn't believe him I did believe him I thought he would I did a logo um, record company didn't happen the logo got used on carrier bags and for a mail order ads in Melody Maker and NME and Richard asked me two, three, four, five times to do a logo. This time we're really going to do the record company. And I went in to see him when he played Tubular Bells. And he played it to everybody who walked through the door. But it sounded to me amazingly different. And I just thought it would be a good album to start with. And I did him the logo. But it was put together very quickly. The model, um, who I, my plan was to do a drawing of the model and do that mirror image effect. But for the mock up, I drew a quick dragon and a montage photograph of the model. And it went down very well. And I immediately went home and started the finished work, which was a drawing. A very big black and white drawing about, I guess it must have been 33 foot across. And it was very detailed. So it was an enormously laboured piece of work. And it took me quite a long time to do. The shock for me was by the time I'd finished it, they were already pressing copies of Tubular Bells. Tubular Bells was heading to the shops with what was essentially a mock-up. It wasn't the finished art. And um, yeah, it was, Virgin never got round to a perfect time to change it. They wanted other logos for exports for all kinds of different things. So I did a variety of variants on that logo, but the, Hmm, what would it have been? A few years ago now, um, I was looking for a piece of CS10 to do a drawing on, and it's not made anymore, but it was, it was handy. It was not perfect. It was a very nice board to do drawings in line. And I found this very large piece of CS10 board, and I thought, wow, perfect. But it had the Virgin logo drawn on it. And... I had two options. I had either rub out the drawing or finish it. And it was finished as a pencil drawing, but I hadn't inked it back in the day. So I inked it and made a print of it. And um, it's Hank Rogers gave Richard um, a couple of, some of the prints on the, on the anniversary. <laughs> I'm getting ticked off not painting. You got an interesting comment or question. It was a question, and I missed the name again. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, <laughs> Trilby says that tree won't paint itself. Very good point. Sorry, what? Nothing. Um, so we got this comment saying, in an infinite. Okay, I'm paraphrasing slightly. In an infinite universe, the landscape you're painting is a reality somewhere. Do you ever consider this while you're working? I think we can all think about that while we're looking at this. <laughs> um, what I think about it is I, I would like the idea of 
making the planet we live on a much more perfect place. The bits that we interact with, the bits that we concrete over and frankly make an appalling mess of, our cities are not wonderful places and why not? So I guess I see it much more as a call to action for the planet we're living on. We could live in a better way and it wouldn't be more or less expensive. We just do things differently. I don't know why we put up with the way things are done actually. So we had a comment, I missed the name again, it's some, some, something fellows um, who says his dad went to school yes. with you and he said his dad remembers you drawing Heath Robinson style spaceships. Yeah, that? Oh, did he? <laughs> I remember he, 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 he talked to us a couple of days ago. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Um, yeah. Was he in the same class as me? His dad? I think so, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, so Kathy has asked several times, um, so I think it might be good to mention several people. Uh, she asked what authors you listen to when you're painting. Oh. Oh, Heath Fellows, uh, not Heath Fellows, Heath Robinson type gadgets is what you were painting at school. It could be. I did terribly badly at <laughs> art in Hong Kong. <laughs> I mean, basically the art lesson was to make, pot carve a potato and make repetitive patterns and that had zero interest for me. Hmm. So your favourite authors when you're painting? Um, anything engaging. Um, I was I never interested in vampires as a subject, but I remember one day having nothing other than a Stephen King book to listen to, and I was astonished how much I enjoyed it. So I've listened to a lot of Stephen King since. Um, I'm still not a fan of the horror genre, but I like his writing. Um, God, there's a. Hmm. I could show them what you've got here. Sorry. I could show them what you've got here behind okay. you. Should we have a look? We got. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. We've got Ian Rankin, Michael Connolly, Philip Pullman. Um. Who else have we got? Joan Nesbo, Lee Child. There you go. Anything distracting and no attempt to be educational. Well, actually, there's some histories, but it's not what I read. Um, what I read tends to be different to that. But what I listen to, the most important aspect of about it is that it's distracting. Um, sorry, I missed the name again. Um, we had a question. Do you know Bonsai Rock in Lake Tahoe? No. Oh, you can look it up. I should, yeah. I should and I will. Um, oh, I, missed a, uh, I missed a question that I think looks like something I want to read. Um, so Chengis said... Um, that the spires to him look like it looks like a mosque to him I can see what he means actually with the spires and that central part the dome it looks almost like a dome in the middle there well it's interesting because a lot of the architecture we, we think of as a mosque is um, based on the Hagia Sophia which was actually a Christian Orthodox cathedral and the minarets were added, and that gives it that mosque silhouette. But I like the spires, and basically the inspiration for me is not the mosques, but Gothic. So I would see this as a sort of organic Gothic, and not necessarily religious. I think 
full building should be that inspiring. Um, ah, do you like to listen to biographies? I like histories more. I read, I, I read rather than listen to a lot of history. And <laughs> rare. I have to tell you, if there was no one watching and I was listening to a story, I might, might paint stars for an hour and it would drive me nuts. And I'd walk around, I'd sit down and I might stare at the painting for two hours. And then I might decide, oh, I'm going to change something completely and redo it. But when I'm working, I'm not physically painting continuously. I take breaks, not f so much for a rest, but to find my geography, to find out where I'm going with the painting, to look ahead and see if I'm not going into a cul-de-sac. So to continuously paint, um, that happens uh, if I've figured everything out from beginning to end in my head in advance. It's rare, but that does happen. But um, the other extreme is in my hallway, I've got a painting I started before Freya was born. It was started 30 something years ago and it's still in my mind only half finished. And I go and I stare at it and I add a bit and I stare at it some more and then I forget about it for a few weeks and I keep working on it and it will get finished. But as, as it's un, under no pressure with it except my own. And I'm enjoying it so much. I'm not going to rush it to finish it. I'm going to let it evolve. And yeah, I paint when I'm ready to make a mark. And until then, I watch and wait. How are we doing with the questions, Fred? Yeah? I've got lots of questions. Can you paint and answer questions? I can answer questions, whether I paint or not. Well, who knows? Okay. <laughs> um, someone asked, and this is something I want to know as well, because I'm sure you do. Um, have you got any Michael Kaluta anecdotes? Michael Kaluta? Michael Kaluta is a lovely guy, and I wish I spent more time with him. I haven't seen him for quite a while. I tried very hard to get in touch with him last time I was in New York. But I, I do have a Michael Kaluta anecdote. I went to New York specifically to see the United Nations on their 50th anniversary. We were supposed to be doing something with them and uh, it was a miserable time, a miserable meeting. It, was, it should have been fun, but it was tedious. But what was huge fun is I met up with Michael for sushi. And the other thing we did is we go and I, I would take him to see my favorite model train shop, which is called the Red Caboose. And he would take me to see his favorite model aeroplane shop. So we did that in the morning and we were heading up Times Square for quite a walk in front of us to his one of his favorite sushi bars. And as we were walking up the road, a car careened towards us right across Times Square and it was aiming at us and there was a guy hanging on. Oh, sorry, it wasn't a car, it was a van. There was a guy hanging on to the driver's door trying to punch the driver and it plowed into some parked cars and it was kind of amazingly um, dramatic. But no sooner had that happened and we started to cross the road another car came and drove what appeared to be right at us and pulled up. And Michael was furious because we had to jump out of the way. And he banged on the roof and four men jumped out, <laughs> all of them holding guns. <laughs> and he knocked me right across the floor in, into, a, into a drugstore and like flat on the ground <laughs> like that. And I didn't really know what was happening. It's, took me so by surprise 
But um, it was the police actually, and they weren't interested in us. They were interested in the driver of the van. And the guy hanging on the outside was a policeman. So it was an interesting adventure. I love being in Michael's flat because his flat is completely three-dimensional. I mean, I've got bookshelves. Here. I have one or two items leaning against the books, you know, other books, a CD. I have G clamps where I rest paintings. But Michael's bookshelves are covered in all kinds of treasures, postcards, models, everything. And he has sticks coming out from between the books and models on the end of them. So th there is no edge to his studio. It's, you know, you, you've four or five feet from the, from the bookshelves, you have to pause because there's fabulous stuff. Quite a lot of good stuff in here as well, she. Well, it's mostly depends. books, love. I quite like her, though. <laughs> she was done for First Virgin Records store in Brighton. She was supposed to be leaning over, pressing the buttons on the jukebox. Ah, I'm uh -huh. taking the microwave too far. There we go. I worked with Michael on a project called Black Onyx. Uh, that was fantastic fun. We were, but I think we spent quite a few months in in San Francisco. We had an apartment, and we he stayed very much on New York time, and I was staying on UK time. So he would get up at two or three in the morning and go into the office. I would get up at the same time and work in the, the apartment we had, and it was great because by the time everyone else turned up we'd finished the work we were doing for the day, which was mostly to do a critique of the animation that the Russian teams have been doing overnight in, in Moscow. And there came a time when we were having lunch one day and Michael said, we finished our day's work. And I said, yes. And he said, you live in England, I live in New York, we've got nothing to do. And I said, yes, well, we did have lots of stuff to do, but it was mostly just hanging out and doing interesting things. He said, do you feel you can take on another job? <laughs> and I thought, hmm, why not? So we, did, we took on another parallel job. And that was good, too. We, we did complete that very quickly. He's a great person to work with. Fantastic character and fabulous artist. I just should say, working with Michael's an honour, but he is a brilliant designer. He's a great artist, but he's a brilliant designer. He, he has a lot of original ideas in all his work. You owe me for that, Michael. <laughs> I like Michael too. He's yes. always very nice to me and nice about my work on Facebook. And we were in America... I can't remember what it was for. It was something, maybe it was some kind of art convention or exhibition or something. But if, It was that we were returning from Nearfest. I think it was later than that, but it fell over my birthday and I was okay. feeling a little bit vulnerable about it because none of my friends were around and I couldn't do anything. And I was feeling a bit sad, um, sorry for myself. And you and me and Michael went out for sushi and it was just so lovely and had such a nice time. And that made up for it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's great. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I would like to say that, just so you know, everyone, I have been signalling to Dad to paint, and he won't be told, so you get what you get. <laughs> I will be told. I thought I gave an incredibly lucid reason why it's let's not have a look at, Let's have a look at the painting. Now the sketches are up on the website. This is what it was all for. So what more is there to do? Finish the tree. Do some work in here and a bit more modelling there. And then I guess it, I think it's going to be done. Oh yeah, and finish the stars. So the stars are unbelievably boring. Get done with a brush this size. And Wait, let me go in. Oh, well, not I, I've not I got paint on it. Okay. I'll put some paint on it. 
Uh, Mark asks, how do I signal for him to paint? Um, I go like this. Like she puts the evil eye on me. <laughs> Okay, so the challenge for me, and I think I mentioned it the other day, is to make them as small as possible. Oh, it looks really lovely with the stars. So I'm not going to torment you by you watching me put exclamation marks all over it. Oh, is that it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> Um, okay, well, it's sort of wrapping up time. Are there some final uh, final words? Um, I want to say again, all the videos go on the YouTube channel. So if you want to catch up with anything or watch them in order. Um, and the sketches from this painting are up on the site now, if you want to have a look at those. There's going to be more of those, isn't there? Because you've got some little pencil drawings too. Were you thinking of putting those Oh, up? yeah. There's a lot of pencil drawings that went with this project. So uh, we'll put it all up and we'll the pencil drawings will be less substantially yeah tagged. yeah yeah <laughs> um i've been having talks if i won't mention any names because that will give the game away on another project which is very secret at the moment but hopefully won't be for more than a, a, a week or two so i'm going to be starting another painting very soon and we'll probably do this again um between now and then, we're going to do the prints and we're going to do the architectural talk. Oh gosh, and next week, on Saturday... We're going to do the robots. Yeah, on the 30th of May. Um, God, what was that noise? That was a bird crashing into the door. Oh dear. We have some birds nesting in the ceiling. I thought they were outside, but apparently they can be outside or inside, depending on their own whim. Yes. That was upsetting. Everyone survived, but we did have one in yesterday, didn't we? Yeah. Anyway, 30th of May, on a Saturday, we're doing a, co a collaboration video. Uh, we've shared on Dad's Facebook, um, and on Friday, are we going to be doing a live at 7 as well as the recording of the scanning? Yeah, yeah. And we'll have a model of the robot, a very crude model so the pair of us can argue about how what goes where and you will see me losing an argument gracefully yet again mm, great <laughs> <laughs> is that everything yeah okay. i think that's everything and this is another question there's dad we haven't got there's tons uh, there's tons always you guys um do, do the paintings get droppings on them <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, they do. And not just from birds. Not just from, all sorts of animals come in. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, they get curated from time to time and, and cleaned. But um, yeah, there's always a risk in the studio of some creature. <laughs> well, someone said they've put uh, going on our collaboration thing if you mark yourself as going it's really great for how I look to my company so if you feel like it you don't have to you don't have to <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah I wanted to say we've got loads of really good questions from you guys I say it every single time if I didn't ask I'm really sorry they go up really quickly and while they're coming up on the screen I'm trying to note them down and I miss ones so if your question didn't get asked come back on Friday same time 7 p.m. English yeah. summer time we're gonna do switch the emphasis of the conversation on Friday to talking about the creative process where do ideas come from and how you capture them and nail them because that seems to be representative of a lot of questions and it's something that fascinates me and I want to do. I mentioned it before when we talked about Ramesses and so on, but I think we could go into it a bit more. Okay, brilliant. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Mm. Thank you very much indeed. It's, it's an honour that so many of you come. Yeah, we're all very surprised. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>